voter suppression? Joining me now to discuss is co-founder of Black, Black Voters Matter, Cliff Albright. Dr. Albright, so is this good <clears throat> news that Manchin has some parts of this bill that he is willing to vote for? Well, it's, 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 it's better news. I don't know if I'd go quite as far as to say good news yet, but it's certainly better news than a ridiculous op-ed where he comes out saying that he's not going to support the For the People Act and gave absolutely no reason for not supporting it other than because the people that are trying to suppress votes don't want to support it. So it's, it's better news than his op-ed, but it's still not good news because as, you, as you've pointed out, there are many provisions that he is um, he, of the of the act that he is not supporting that he needs to support that we need to expand voter access right like 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 making it easy for people to get their voting rights restored when they have past convictions right so there are many provisions that he's still not supporting and then there are things that he is supporting which basically amounts to a little bit of Jim Crow right he's still supporting uh, the the usage of photo ID or voter ID which we know has had a, a, a disproportionate impact on black and brown communities um, there's still other provisions that he's supporting that that we know he's he's actually trying to mandate um, excuse vote by mail, which is different from no excuse vote by mail, right? Excuse vote by mail means you've got to tell them what your excuse is, and usually there's a limited number of excuses that that you can use. That's why states like Mississippi, states like South Carolina, um, still have low voter turnout because they were even in the midst of COVID, they were requiring excuses. So there are still provisions, harmful provisions. Jim Crow provisions that he's still saying he wants to see in the bill, and then there's some good stuff that he's not supporting having in the bill. But if lawmakers can trim down their bill to a mansion approved bill, is this one of those cases where you say, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good? Is it the case where you say, if we can, if we can get something, let's get it? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't know if this is a case of don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, right? Because I'm, I'm, it's not very clear that this is good in some ways. In some ways, this is actually a step backwards. Imagine if you're in a state like Colorado or if you're in some other state that already has like widespread voter access, vote by mail access, almost universal in, in a couple of states. And then this bill gets passed. In many ways, this is a step backwards. And so this isn't quite the case of, of not letting the perfect being the enemy of the good, because this isn't necessarily a good. There are some harmful things that he's still trying to, um, to, to, to support and keep in these bills or keep as a practice that some of these uh, voter suppression bills that we've seen, or, or, or not even recent voter suppression bills, just bad practices that have been around for decades, he's still supporting that. So I think that there's still a ways to go. I think that what we know, and this is the good news, Charles, the pressure is working. He's getting phone calls, he's getting text messages. I was in Charleston, West Virginia, just the other day with the Poor People's Campaign at his district office in, in Charles, in, um, Charleston, where they were putting pressure on him. The pressure is working. Now's the time not to not to let up and not to to, to start um, you know settling for the for, for for bad, but to keep the pressure on. I believe that we can get him to get even closer to the types of provisions that we need to have in a true voting rights bill. Wait, wait. You believe that Manchin's going to add more things to his "I like it" list? <laughs> I believe. Truthfully, I believe that if we keep the pressure on, if we continue to do the things that we've been doing and ramp it up again, this is not the time to let your foot off the pedal. This is the time to go even harder. We're going to be going to Charleston and as well as nine other cities and states as part of our freedom ride that kicks off in just two days in, in New Orleans. And we'll be taking it from New Orleans, going all the way through the south up to West Virginia and eventually to D.C. on the 26th. We've got to keep the pressure up right now. And if we do so, then I believe that he can still move a little bit further. The pressure's been working. We got to keep it up. At the end of the day, just, just a week ago, he was telling us there was nothing that could be done. Now look where we are. Again, if we keep up the pressure, if we keep up the organizing, then there's no telling where we can get this bill. So, so I, I just caught that. That's that's the reverse freedom ride because the freedom ride was from D.C. to New Orleans. And so you guys are going from New Orleans back to D.C. I just caught that when you were talking about that. Anyway, but, but, but I do want to ask you this, though. What do you want Democrats in Congress to do? Hold up? And if you want them to hold up, then what is the timeline? When is when is 
it, when is it when, when do you run out of time when is it too late yeah yeah no that's a great question i mean uh schumer has said that they want to bring this to a vote during the week of the 21st during the week that will actually be on the freedom rise i'm really glad that you caught the reverse freedom ride nature of it oh uh, but yeah so so that's pretty much the timeline that we're looking at by the time we get to dc our belief and our hope is that we will have a, a bill that has actually been passed right but at the end of the day we got to do this we want to do it before they head off into into the july recess we believe that we can get this done over the next week and a half. But again, it's going to take all of us answering the call the same way those in 60 years ago in, in 61 answered the Freedom Ride call then. It's going to take all of us answering the call and putting the pressure on. And if we do that, then yes, I believe that we can get a better bill out of it. I think that we could get very close to, which is what the demand is. We we, we want it not amended, well, right? We, we want it in the current form. Right. But let, let, let's just talk uh, procedure in the Senate. Schumer has said that he's going to force the vote already. Now, that he said that before Manchin put out his list. Uh, what do you think is about to happen now? Is Schumer going to back off and go back to the drawing board and say we're going to recraft the bill in, if, if, by your timeline in a week and a half? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, th think about what's happened in just the past week and a half from his op-ed, right? So there's already been movement in a week and a half. We believe that, that there could be more movement. So to answer your question, I think that, I think, I'm not talking to Charles Schumer, but I think what happens now is that they start sitting down and say, okay, he asked him, keep in mind, part of the reason why, why Manchin presented these options, this little shopping list that he has, is because Schumer told him, look, if you can't support this, tell us what you can support. He's now said that. I'm not crazy about it, but he's now said he what he can support. Now there's a dialogue. Now there's some discussion that's about actual provisions and policy and not just that he can't support something because it's not bipartisan, because there's there's no Republicans that are going to vote for it. That's a step in the right direction. Now there could be actual discussion about the provisions and about the policies. I believe that that can happen over the next week and a half. Again, look at what's happened just in the past week and a half. Well, I only have like 30 seconds left, but I just want to get a yes or no question on this, answer on this. If they present something like what uh, Manchin just presented that he said he'd like as a bill, do you encourage Democrats in the Senate to vote for that? Even with this shortcoming? We are going un 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 until the until the last vote is cast. We are going to demand we're going to continue to push for the HR1 in its current form. That's that's our demand and that's going to be our demand. And, you know, they say it ain't over till, till the, oh, it's, a, it's a horrible metaphor, till the fat lady sings. But until it's over, until that last vote is cast, our demand is for HR1 in its current status. That's what we're going to be fighting for. That's what I'm believing we can get if we keep the pressure on. Dr. Cliff Albright with the strategically political answer of not answering the question, but I thank you so much. Thank you for being on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Charles. It.